Hi, and welcome to this section of the Physics 2 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to conquer a core part of this course that you really have to understand before you can go on and do any of the remainder of the material. The good news is it's a pretty easy concept once we explain it through the example problems. And what you'll find out is it's really not that big of a deal. And you also have a lot of everyday experience with the general concepts of what, what we're going to talk about in this section. And that's going to be the concept of heat. I bet that everybody watching this video right now has an idea in their head what heat actually is to them. And uh, you'll find that your common sense ideas of what heat is is actually pretty, pretty much what we're going to define it mathematically to be here in this physics course. We're just going to put some rigor behind it so we can calculate and put numbers behind heat. Well, first of all, let me back up for a second from heat and let's review a little bit about temperature. We said that temperature in the previous uh, couple sections ago was really a measure of the internal energy, so to speak, the vibrations going on inside of a substance. It's sort of the aggregate measure of sort of the average, you know, energy state of what, of, of what the material has inside of it, how much agitation, so to speak, the atoms have, the more, the higher the temperature of a substance, the more the atoms or molecules are just jiggling around and, the, you know, the stronger they're kind of bouncing around and vibrating in there, and the lower the temperature, of course, the motion is slower and, and so on and so forth. And if you go all the way down to absolute zero, there's no movement at all. It just, everything, the atoms are just completely motionless, okay? Now, the concept of heat is related to temperature, just like you might think of in your everyday life. Heat, what do you think heat actually means? Well, in physics, we are going to define heat to mean, okay, and I don't really necessarily want you to memorize this definition, just kind of listen to me and internalize it. Basically, in order to raise the temperature of something, you have to give it heat. You have to add heat to an object, okay? That that's really is a definition of heat. Temperature is what we actually measure with a thermometer. In order to raise the temperature of something, you have to add heat to it. In order to decrease the temperature, you have to take heat away. Or another way of saying that is the object must deliver or, or lend its heat or give off heat to the environment for its temperature to go, down, to go down. So you can think of temperature as sort of the measure of what the substance actually has going on inside of it energy-wise. In order to lower that temperature, this substance must deliver heat to the surroundings. In order to raise the temperature of this substance, we must deliver heat to the object. And that, you know, that, that makes perfect sense. I mean, when you have a pot of water on the stove, you know, room temperature water, it's at a certain temperature. We all know that we light a fire under that pot of water. What we're doing there is we're delivering heat. Uh, to, to the pot and that heat is going into the atomic motion or the molecular motion of the water and it's agitating it more and more. Eventually it agitates it so much that, that the uh, steam comes off the top and we'll actually talk a little bit more about that in the next section. But here we're going to talk about heat and we're going to put some math behind it. Now the only thing you're going to have to get over when we talk about this is that if from here on out in the entire course when we talk about heat the actual um, the actual uh, uh, equations that involve heat. The, the symbol for heat, uh, you would think it would be an H, right, for heat. It's not. It's at, and, and there's a good reason for that. We're not going to talk about it now, but it's not called H. Anytime you're, you're talking about heat in physics, you're talking about Q. So you have to burn that in your head and just get over that. It looks a little bit weird in the equations. Every time you see Q, Q you've got to think of a fire under a stove delivering heat to your object or some sort of blast chiller taking heat away from your object. Q is heat, and that's just sort of the way it is, okay? Um, I, I think the, the way I want to proceed at this point is just to go ahead and write an equation on the board relating heat and temperature, because we said heat and temperature are interrelated because delivering heat raises the temperature. We're going to write that relation down, and everything else that follows is just going to fall out because of it. So basically what you need to know, and this is the only equation that you'll have to really even be exposed to in this section, and it's a very important one, the amount of heat, Q, okay, needed to raise the temperature, and I'm going to abbreviate that temp for temperature, of a material is, and the good news is it's an incredibly simple equation. What do you think this equation is going to be? Let's just write it down. It's very simple. The heat, the heat required to raise the temperature, Q, is going to be equal to the mass of the substance times a constant we're going to talk about in a minute called specific heat times the change in temperature uh, that you're trying to pull off here. Okay. So let's go ahead and label this stuff and make sure we're all on the same page. Q. We said Q is what we're calling heat. The unit of this 